Good morning. morning. Welcome to the Lord's House here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. It's wonderful to be here among you today to worship with you and to uh, hear the Word of God together. Uh, This morning for our service, we're going to be using the service of prayer and preaching. You can follow along up on your screens for that, uh, for the, the portions of the service that we'll speak. And then for our hymns, our hymns are also up there, but you can find those in the hymnal, and our hymn numbers are on our hymn board and on the screens, as I said. And so as we begin our worship today, we sing hymn number 901, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty. God's blessings to you all in your worship this morning. Please rise. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. O God, save me by your name and vindicate me by your might. O God, hear my prayer. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. 
Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Please be seated for our next hymn. Our first reading for today comes to us from the prophet Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. The Lord reveals to Jeremiah that as he has been preaching to the people of Israel, telling them the message of the Lord, that they have sinned and need to repent, instead of hearing those words and receiving them and and taking action on them, they instead plot to end the life of Jeremiah, literally trying to kill the messenger. But Jeremiah knows that the Lord is on his side and that the Lord will visit vengeance on those who do evil. The Lord made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not know it was against me. They devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, who judges righteously, who tests the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you have I committed my cause. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading for today comes to us again from the letter of St. James, the third and fourth chapter. We've been hearing from St. James the last few Sundays as James is very, uh, he's very focused on helping us see how we live out our Christian faith in this world. And I think that these words from James that we hear today are going to be harsh. They're not words we want to hear We're talking about selfishness, pride, ambition that might lead us to try to uh, be favored by the world but not by God. Perhaps these are some of the similar words that Jeremiah spoke to the people of Israel that, one, that desired them to end his life. And so we hear these words uncomfortably, but we should take them to heart. St. James writes, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his work in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, Do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet 
and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, Whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we hear from the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus reveals once again to his disciples the plan of salvation of his death and his resurrection. But instead of discussing this, the disciples get wrapped up in a conversation about which one of them is the greatest And Jesus uses a child as an illustration to show who truly is the greatest. The disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. And Jesus did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. He took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, a place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We now speak our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite forward any children who'd like to come up for a children's message. Thank you. Come on up. There's plenty of room. Thank you. Thank you. You want to put your offering in here? Or can you bring it up to me? My arm's only so long. There we go. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's good to be with you all. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, we were in the gospel reading hearing about some of Jesus' friends, his disciples. And you know what they were talking about? They wanted to know which one of his disciples was the best one. They were talking to each other. Which one do you think of us as the best one? Jesus' favorite friend. Now, let me ask you a different question here. Do you like to be the best at something? That would be great, wouldn't it? What would you like to be the best at? Yeah. You'd like to be the best artist. What else? Anybody else want to be the best at? Yeah, go ahead. I want to be the best scientist. Best scientist. All right. What, anyone else want to be the best runner, the fastest in your class? Would you like to do that? Yeah. See, that, that's the way we oftentimes think that we want to be the best at something, right? That's what we always want. But do you think we have to be the best at something to have Jesus love us? No. No. In fact, you know, Jesus loves us no matter what we're good at or not good at. Jesus loves us whether we get good grades or we get bad grades. Jesus loves us whether we're fast or we're slow or we're sick or we're healthy. And that's the point Jesus wants his disciples to know. You, you can't, it's okay to want to be really good at something, to be even the best at something, but is that going to make Jesus love you more? No, because Jesus always already loves you more than you can imagine. So whether you succeed, that is, whether you're really good at something or something goes wrong, whether you're happy or you're sad, whether things are, are really nice out or you feel not so good, Jesus loves you. And Jesus still chose you to be his child. Isn't that amazing? So you don't have to be the best at anything to have Jesus love you. He already does because he died on the cross for you and he promised you that you get to live with him forever. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and let's thank him for that. Dear Jesus, thank you for choosing me, choosing us to be your people, that no matter what goes on in our lives, you are always there, always loving us, and always you care for us. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you very much for coming up. Please be careful as you stand up and head down the stairs. And as our young people head back to their seats, we sing hymn number 738.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to each and every one of you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It would be an easy temptation to fall into, wouldn't it? After all, of all the people that Jesus had encountered, of all the people that he had ministered to and spoken with, he had chosen you, one of his 12 closest friends, one of his 12 closest confidants. You are one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. You get to walk around and hear him preach every sermon. You get to see as he performs unthinkable miracles, healings, feedings, exorcisms, even resurrections from the dead. And he has chosen you to witness all of that. It would be easy to get into your head that you must be one of the elite. You must be one of those who really has something going for him, don't you think? So you can look out at the crowds of people and feel a sense of pride. Jesus chose me. But then you look at the other 11 and wonder, well, I know we're better than the rest of them, but out of us, who is the best? An elite group of 12. There must be one of us who rises to the top. Who's the greatest? Who's number one? And this is exactly where the disciples go with their conversation. It says this, that when they came to Capernaum, when Jesus was in the house, he asked them, what were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Jesus had just gotten done revealing to them his plan of salvation, this cosmic change that was going to happen as the Son of God himself dies for the entirety of the world, of the entirety of the universe, and saves us from our sins. And the, what they find themselves enamored with is, yeah, but which of us is his favorite? But you can understand that because... How much of our lives revolves around wanting to be at the top? Maybe we want to climb a ladder at our job. Or maybe be the head of the class with the best GPA. Even our leisure time, right? As we sit and watch our sports teams win or lose, we love to watch them climb those ranks. We want to be the fan of the number one team. We want to be the fan of the team that wins the championship. We want to be the elite, the top tier. Maybe some of it is for personal glory. Maybe some of it is wanting to be a productive member of society that others can look at and say, boy, I wish I could be like them. I wish I could do what they do. Maybe we want to be someone who contributes and others look at and say, that is a top contributor. Now, as you've heard, as you've attended church for many years, you've, you've heard this, this conversation that Jesus has with his disciples, so you know where this is going. But I want you to try to hear it with ears of the disciples. As men who have witnessed a great many things who wonder who among them is the number one disciple. And the example Jesus gives should be shocking. And Jesus sat down and called the twelve and said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them, taking him in his arms, and he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. He uses a child as an example. Not just children in particular, but one such as a child really is what he means here. And we certainly do value children. We value them for their potential. Right? 
Because no child is truly the greatest at anything. By definition, a child is smaller, weaker, still learning basic concepts that as adults we take those concepts for granted. If you really look at it from a purely utilitarian standpoint, children contribute very little, if anything, to their community or to society. So Jesus, holding up a child and saying, if you want to receive me, if you want to welcome me, you must welcome one such as children. One who doesn't contribute. One who by their own weakness cannot raise themselves up the ranks. Someone who the world looks at and says, well, they're a consumer. They take and take and take. They don't really give back. They will eventually, but not right now. Jesus holding up a child as an example of who is valuable is actually the opposite of how the world sees value in people. What did Jesus do when he went to the cross? He didn't go to die for those who contributed the most to his church. He didn't die just for those who are the top of the ranks. He died for those who cannot save themselves. And that, my brothers and sisters, is all of us. It's not just the poor or the rich. It's not just the young or the old, the weak or the strong, the smart or the unintelligent, the healthy or sick. He came for us not because he knows we can contribute. He came to us because he knows without him we can do nothing. And in that action of lifting up a child, and in that action of dying on the cross for you and for me, we understand that he comes to us and saves us despite our best efforts. Because we, without Christ, are last. We, without Christ, are lost. We, without Christ, can do nothing. And so as we see what the price Christ paid on the cross truly is, we begin to understand the value he puts on me and on you. It is said that something is only as valuable as, some, as what somebody is willing to pay for it. What was Christ willing to pay for you? His very life his blood, his death for you. Regardless of your age, regardless of your status, regardless of your rank, Christ died for you. And so when we look at ourselves and all the different things that make us want to value ourselves or devalue ourselves, what we should see is, what was I purchased with? I was purchased with the very life of the Son of God, and that makes me valuable. That gives me a meaning and a purpose and a life, because not only did Christ say, you are worth my life, but my life will save you and give you a life forever. Because after he paid the biggest price for each and every one of us to die in our place, he then rose and showed us that we, because he has chosen us, will follow him into eternity, follow him into life everlasting. The world may not see us all as equally valuable. 
the world may want to put us on the greatest and the least, number one and the last. But we need look no further than the cross of Christ to see whose we truly are, who has purchased and won us, who has placed value on us. And it's our Lord and our Savior dying for you, rising for you, and promising you a hope and peace and joy into everlasting life. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, I'd like to remind you that we do have our offering plates at the back of church and in the narthex, and we also offer online giving through our website. We continue with the prayer of the church. I invite you to rise. Heavenly Father, you have taken us from all nations and united us in the body of your Son. Send your Holy Spirit to rid your children of all bitter jealousy, boasting, and selfish ambition. Fill the baptized with your wisdom that we may lead peaceable lives with sincerity and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of hosts, give our synod's leaders and all pastors the wisdom that comes down from above that they may be peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Let them sow among us in peace and grant a harvest of righteousness. Bless all pastors and missionaries who continue to bring your word at home and abroad, and we especially pray for James Sharp, Carl Hansen, and Pedro Lopez. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold this world in your order. Preserve the church and the preaching of your word against all enemies. Bless our homes that parents and children may serve one another faithfully and grow in instruction and faith until life's end. Give health and wisdom to all who serve in public office that their authority may be exercised for the benefit of all people. Grant peace and safety to all who serve the public good in law enforcement, firefighting, emergency response, and in the armed forces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your loving kindness, you do not abandon your children to suffer alone, but promise to care for all who call upon your name. Bless the homebound, the lonely, the depressed and anxious, the ill, the dying, those preparing for surgery, receiving treatments, or recovering from procedures. We especially pray for those who desire our prayers, Vivian Johnson, Jerry Vlodo, Dwayne Bonema, Levi Copemans, Mary Ryan, Jesse West, Todd Dagan, Kayla Turing, Shelley Moon, Dennis Deleen, Doug and Sue Holton, Ryan Hawkins, and Kylan Leinert. Comfort them in their distress, heal all their ills of body and soul, and grant them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, whose strength is made perfect in weakness, grant us humility and childlike faith, that we may please you in both will and deed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have called the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your Holy Word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, 
And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house at St. Paul's. Wonderful to have you here with us today. Thanks for joining us. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, first of all, at the very top of your announcements, uh, Vivian Johnson will be having a card shower for her 99th birthday. So if you're, uh, if you're wanting to do that, please send her some cards. I know that that would thrill her. Um, we're going to have an LAF meeting today. Um, uh, no, no. And Sunday, October 13th in the LAF room. Harvest dinner is coming up. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet in the back for that. We also have a sign-up sheet back there for fellowship times that are coming up, so please consider that. Uh, make sure to check out our card cabinet downstairs. Uh, the ladies are, are working on getting cards in there, and there's some scrubbers and things like that in there, so take a look at that. Um, uh, Sunday school uh, today after fellowship time. So first come on downstairs for fellowship time and then Sunday school. And then we'll also have Bible study. The way we're structuring Bible study is that the same lesson that our Sunday school students will be learning will be doing in Bible study. So you can stick around, wait for your kids to be done with Bible study, learn the same lesson they are, and then you can discuss it with them. I think that's a wonderful way for us to grow in our faith as families together. So stick around for Bible study after fellowship time. Uh, also, uh, we are still looking for someone to fill the position of secretary as Bonnie retires. Uh, so if you or someone you know is interested in a, a part-time, 20-hour-a-week job, 
uh, please uh, give, me a, uh, give me a call and I'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, it's general secretarial work and uh, hours are flexible. So if you know anybody who's interested in that, please have them give me a call. The rest of it I think you can look at. There is a lot of announcements, a lot of things going on, so I invite you to take a look at that. Um, that'll help you kind of plan out what's all going on. Are there any announcements that need to be highlighted specifically today? Okay. Well, God's blessings to you all. Have a great week in the Lord.